Hey friends, welcome to the Noob's Guide to Start Learning How to Mine Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies are reaching an all-time high, which has led to resurged interest in everything that's going on. Bitcoin has been down from its high of $40,000, but still teetering at 37 k while Ethereum is sitting high at an all-time high of 1500 bucks. This has led to a large resurgence of interest in the topic of Bitcoin mining, so we wanted to cover that for you here today because some things have changed since I did my first video on this back in 2017. But before we get started, I just want to ask that you smash the like button. It's right down there. You can do it. It's completely completely free. So before we get into how to do this, let's talk about the things that you're going to need. Number one, you're going to need a relatively decently powerful CPU or GPU in order to make any sort of profit. You can use older computer hardware in case you want to, but when it comes to mining, it's essentially an arms race. Whenever there's a brand new technology, it can run at a faster rate, meaning that the difficulty goes up and making it so that everybody who's running on older hardware has less of an advantage. The only reasons why you would want to use older hardware is if you're not actually looking to make a financial profit, but instead want to mine the actual cryptocurrencies, which I presume if you're watching this video, that's not specifically what you're going for. You're just looking to make a cash return. And we'll leave links in the video descriptions to certain websites that show you whether or not a specific product that you have might be profitable, whether it's an RX 580, a GTX 1060, maybe you're still using a GT 1030. You can check these websites to see, would you actually make a profit, enter your electricity cost, or if you have none, then you're just going to have to worry about about whether or not there's gonna be enough return for it to be worth your while. So once you have the hardware completely established and you know that your computer's gonna actually turn a profit, the other thing that you're going to need is a wallet. A wallet's essentially like a bank account number for your cryptocurrency so that whatever service you're using can actually deposit it to you and you get credit for all of the cryptocurrency that you're mining, like when your employer does direct deposit to your bank account. Now wallets can be stored on the internet or in physical hardware, also known as cold storage, so that way they aren't susceptible to being hacked. Remember you're dealing with things that have financial value so that people might potentially want to get in on this and steal it from you. So having it loaded offline is the safest thing to do, but also not the most convenient. I'll leave some links in the video descriptions going over the benefits versus online and offline storage of your crypto wallets, but suffice it to say, you're going to need that before you even begin this journey. But before we get started, I also want to introduce you to some warnings and things you should think about before you get into mining as a hobby or even potentially a full-time thing. Mining is really compute intensive, which means your computer's working at 100% load a lot of the time, which leads to things burning out, most likely your fans. However, there's also more recent reports that the RTX 3080 and 3090 don't have sufficient VRAM cooling and those memory chips are actually burning up because of mining. So just make sure to respect your system. But also just as a note, cryptocurrency as a whole is a wildly volatile market, whether it be the prices or the amount that you're gonna earn from mining due to difficulty, wildly changes. Just look at Bitcoin, it was 20 thousand dollars in December of 2017, but a year later in December 2018, it was worth four thousand dollars. Just make sure you understand the risk before you get started because things can change and do change quite quickly. One of the other things to note about mining is that it's hot and I don't mean that it's popular, but it's going to dump a lot of heat into whatever environment you have the computer in. Your CPU and GPU can run at up to 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, which means that you're going to warm up the ambient temperature, meaning that whatever room you have it in is going to be noticeably warmer. This could be great news in case you're trying to heat your house for the winter or if you're trying to warm up your garage or just some other their enclosed space, but in case you want to keep temperatures down, this might not be something that's going to suit your environment. So let's get started with the general topic at hand here. How do you mine Bitcoin as a noob slash beginner coming into the scene? The truth is you actually don't. Mining Bitcoin is actually a really expensive thing that requires specialized machines that cost thousands of dollars in order to achieve. So what we're going to do is introduce to you how to mine other cryptocurrencies using your gaming system, but then have them converted into the more stable, more well-known Bitcoin. However, in case you want to mine other crypto cryptocurrencies, like we mentioned, and not convert them to Bitcoin. We're not really going to be covering that here. However, note that is a possibility, but strictly speaking, we want you to convert your gaming rig into Bitcoin. That's the general idea of what we're going to be covering today in this video. So up first, we actually have two different programs that are actually super simple to get set up, get installed, and get you on your way of mining Bitcoin with your gaming PC. One of them is the same one that I covered back in 2017, which has gone through some dips and some valleys, but has actually stayed the course and is still a really reputable program here in 2021. The other is another program that I'm highly familiar with and could easily recommend to anybody who's looking to get started. So let's go ahead and start off with NiceHash. This is the program that I recommended back in 2017 because it is just so easy to use. You used to be able to just download the miner, but now they require that you register with them first. This is coming after they've made a lot of changes, especially after they had a major hack back in 2017 where they lost 4,500 Bitcoin. However, it's been noted that within the last couple of months, they've paid that back 
back completely and they no longer are on the hook for anything that got lost there. But we'll talk about how you can mitigate the risk of your Bitcoin getting stolen, especially with services like NiceHash. So the easy part here is that you register your account, you download the software, you get it set up and installed. It does say that you might need to allow certain portions through Windows Defender because it might recognize it as a virus. This is gonna be on your own personal risk tolerance as to whether or not you wanna do it. However, if you go on many forums, you can see that it's actually typically well trusted and this is just a false flag by Windows Defender, but I'm not saying that you have to override it if you're not comfortable with that. However, once you get it installed, all you need to do is get the Bitcoin wallet that they supplied to you, enter it into the field that they need, and then you just benchmark your PC and it will start mining whatever is the most profitable cryptocurrency algorithm for you. Currently with me running my 10900K and RTX 3080 system, a very high-end system, I'm making about $7.85 per day if you convert the cryptocurrency I'm mining into Bitcoin and then you convert that Bitcoin into just plain cash at this point. However, it does have a few options that make things a little bit easier and better on your wallet, such as the fact that it won't mine if you're below a certain profit margin. So in my case, when I only had my GPU mining and while I was doing a screen recording, which was taking some of the GPU horsepower, I set it to $5 and you can see it instantly turned off the mining because my profitability was under that $5 mark, again, because I was taking resources in the order to even to show you this. But once profitability goes up above $5, it would just automatically resume. However, one of the neat things is that it also allows you to provide your electricity costs so that it can know whether or not you're making an actual net profit or if you're just making a gross profit on it before you deduct the electricity costs. And it also has some other nice features such as the fact that if you leave your PC idle for a minimum amount of time, it will then start mining, but then when you resume activity, it will stop mining so that you're not taking any of your CPU or GPU horsepower and putting it towards mining when you might actually need it for video gaming. Now, let's get back to how you could potentially be safe with regards to NiceHash. With the Bitcoin wallet address that they provide to you, that's stored with NiceHash, and that's how the 4,500 Bitcoin were stolen back in 2017. Somebody was able to access those crypto wallets and then able to transfer it into their own. So the way to mitigate this is to get your own Bitcoin wallet that you actually manage and you have all of the private keys for, whether that be on another website or it be a physical hardware wallet like this Trezor one, which we have a link to in the video description. That makes it so that you offload some of the risks so that if NiceHash does potentially get hacked again, you're not gonna be offloaded like everybody else because your wallet's not stored with them. So that was NiceHash. It's actually been a bit better to work with over the last four years and still really enjoyable and easy for any beginner. However, let's talk about the second option. And that would be Awesome Miner. It's actually a pretty easy one to set up as well, but then it has more scaling options for you in case you want to be managing multiple rigs across your local network or across the internet itself. However, if you don't wanna deal with any of that, it's actually just also really simple. You can start with the Profit Miner, which makes it so that you're just gonna mine whatever is most profitable and you can adjust it later on in case you wanna add more complicated components to it, such as choosing your own miner, choosing your own pool, choosing your own wallet, all of that, you can take care of that. But in case you just want the bare bones, you just set up to run a Profit Miner, you enter your Bitcoin address into the pools that are potentially available for it to mine from, and then you're ready to go. You hit start and it just goes off mining, whether it be your CPU or GPU, it can get all established on Awesome Miner pretty simply. It has a couple little extra basic features like a graph of your temperatures and your hash rates, which nice hash doesn't so easily provide. So I do like Awesome Miner just a little bit better for that reason, but they're both pretty good at just doing what they say that they're doing. I will note that Awesome Miner has had a history of overstating my profitability to some extent where I haven't experienced that with nice hash. As I mentioned, my nice hash profit was $7.85 per day, whereas on Awesome Miner, it was saying my profit was $8.75 per day. However, once the day is over, I look at what I got from the pool and what actually ends up in my wallet, and it turns out that it's usually more closer to what nice hash quotes and not necessarily what Awesome Miner quotes. So just to keep that in mind as you're mining, even though it might look like you're more profitable on Awesome Miner, it's not necessarily the case. However, if you want more than just the basic setup, Awesome Miner also gives a paid version that can give you access to more than just two things mining at a time, whether that be your CPU or GPU, you want multiple GPUs and multiple CPUs running, you can do that as well as cloud management for all that you're doing. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because I haven't tried it out myself, but the paid version 
is there. So that's all you need, but let's go ahead and review the points that I went across. Number one, you're gonna need the hardware to actually physically mine on and make sure that it's going to be profitable in order for it to even be worth your while. Number two, you're going to need a crypto wallet where they can actually deposit the cryptocurrency that you're mining. NiceHash provides one for you. That's a little bit more risky, whereas Awesome Miner has you input your own. Number three, you download one of the two programs that I mentioned today. You get it installed, set up, and you just click start and it runs by itself. And that's essentially where the base level of the mining world starts. You use your gaming rig and convert it into Bitcoin. However, it can get a lot more complicated and nuanced than that. If you do your research, you'll start getting into things like undervolting your GPU, reducing the graphics frequencies, trying to optimize performance per watt, doing BIOS flashes on your GPUs in order to get optimization set. And then you can start looking into the world of ASICs or dedicated miners, or even building out your own mining rig complete with a whole bunch of cards. However, I would probably recommend that if you are building a mining rig, you don't mention it in front of gamers because they tend to get really salty after what happened back in 2018. So that, my friends, is the basics of Bitcoin mining. It's actually super simple to get started if you already have the computer hardware, but it can get a lot more complicated in case you get interested. It's kind of attainable for a lot of people, so we'll leave all of the links of everything we talked about in the video description. Nothing that we mentioned today has any sort of paid affiliation with the companies. Nice Hash nor Awesome Miner have ever been financially contracted with us. This has just been from personal experience that I've been recommending it. The only affiliate link we'll have down below is is the one for the Amazon wallet because we have an affiliate program with Amazon. But again, check out the links in the video description to get started to get understanding in case you wanna know, but you can just not know anything and get started pretty easily as well. And with that being said, I'm Brett. This has been your noob's guide to Bitcoin mining. Let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments. Don't forget to smash that like button, my friends, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.